Hi friends! I'm finally back to start the How I Die videos. I know I've been mentioning this for like maybe a year? I'm not sure. Um, but we finally have an actual dyeing video. Today I'm going to go over how I dye tonals and we're going to create this really nice colorway together. It is kind of like Baja Blast so it's like perfect for summer. Very refreshing colorway. Um, let's see if it'll zoom in. My nails are not looking so great. Uh, I probably should have hidden them. Is that better? <laughs> um, but yeah, I hope that this helps encourage you to start dyeing yourself. I hope it makes it not as scary. I will also definitely like to point out that this is not the only way to dye tonals at all. Um, it's just what works best for me. Um, so hopefully it does help. And yeah. So a few things that you'll need for today, if you are following along, is some yarn. Any animal-based fibers will work for this. Um, I use acid dye, which is how we dye, will dye um, animal-based fibers. This won't work for like cotton and other plant-based fibers, um, so I'm not familiar with that technique. Um, but any animal-based fiber should work very well for this. You can get bare yarn, or even if you want to over dye a yarn, if you know don't love the color, you can dye it again and darken it or just change it a bit. Um, I would suggest if you are a beginner, I would suggest um, superwash treated yarn. If you would like non-superwash treated yarn, just please be very careful of how hot the water temperature gets while you're dyeing and moving it around while it's very hot because it can easily felt. Um, so just be careful of that. It's definitely possible though if that's what you would like to use. For this process, there are just a few things that we will definitely need. Um, a steel pot, a stainless steel pot. I would suggest getting one depending on how much yarn you'd like to dye at a time. I usually do three skeins at a time, um, but if you want to do just one, you can get like a smaller pot. Um, I would just say be careful not to get a pot that is too small for the amount of yarn you would like to use. There should be a lot of room for it to like move around in the pot once the water is in there. Um, you really want the dye to like get in to the yarn I guess. Um, like if the yarn is kind of bunched up then the dye will have a harder time getting throughout and it won't be like as even of a coating. Um, so just make sure there's enough room in your pot. Um, Aside from those two things, you'll definitely want some acid dye. Today I will be using the Jacquard brand dyes, um, citric acid or vinegar. I usually use citric acid, but vinegar works just as well. Um, and it's a little easier to get, but I think citric acid is pretty readily available as well. You'll want a something to stir the pot with once we add the dye in. I You'll also want something to mix the dye in before we add it to the pot. I use measuring cups, but you can use like any kind of cup um, ahead of time. I will also say, before we go further, everything we use for dyeing, do not use again for like food or, li or drinking or anything like that. If there are kitchen supplies, then they should no longer go back into the kitchen for cooking. Um, everything that you use to dye should just stay as dyeing materials. Uh, even if you clean it out, I feel like it's safest to not use it to consume food or drinks with again. Um, the last few things, you'll definitely want a measuring spoon or not. If you're not interested in um, like having a repeatable dye recipe and you just kind of want to test out different colors, you can. You definitely don't need a measuring spoon, you can just like pour some dye in as you go. But if it's something you want to recreate, then you should definitely have something to measure it with that you can use like for the future um, so you can recreate it. Lastly, hopefully that's lastly of all we need. Um, I like to use zip ties for while I'm dyeing yarn. A lot of people I've seen also use um, like those plastic shower rings because they open as well but while we're dyeing yarn we'll usually open up the hank of yarn so that is just like a giant loop. Um, and we'll be putting the zip tie through that. Um, and this is kind of how we'll pick up the yarn and move it around while we're dyeing. So it doesn't get as tangled or knotted or anything like that. Um, if you don't have this or uh, the shower curtain thing, you can also use another piece of 
yarn or like a thicker thread to cord I mean to wrap around in the same way you don't want to weave it in I mean you technically could probably use the ties that come on the yarn the ones that are like kind of woven around but I think it would definitely be easier to you um, have one that like goes around the whole loop like this you can pick it up move it around while it's in the pot and like just try to help make sure the die gets all in there all in there <laughs> um but yeah I hope you enjoy this video I hope it is helpful and let's get dying to start prepping the yarn you first want to open up the hanks if they are twisted and put the zip tie or your shower ring or yarn around the loops like so Next, we want to prepare a warm bath for the yarn to soak in ahead of time. Some dyers will add citric acid to their yarn soaking water. I don't recommend that for tonals though as you don't want any acid to be on the yarn before you touch the dye because it might um, kind of prevent an even coverage and we'll go through that a little bit later as well. Once your yarn is fully submerged, you just want to let it sit for at least 30 minutes, but you can definitely do this overnight as well. Later on, I'm just going to gather all that I need for dyeing, dyes, measuring equipment, spoons, cups, citric acid, a washcloth, lots of paper towels. <laughs> Before you even think about opening the dye bottles though, it's time to prepare. Apron, ventilator mask, always on when the dye is open. I was trying so hard to get these in focus and it like half worked, but the dyes that I'm using are Jacquard's Emerald and Turquoise dyes and I'm going to be using 1 8 of a teaspoon of both colors. When mixing the dyes, you want to use very hot water. I also have a kettle that I use a lot of time, um, but sometimes I will just make sure the tap water is very, very hot before stirring a bunch. Um, I also like to use this milk frother. You can see it makes it very fluffy. Um, you can scoop the foam off before adding it to the pot as well, but sometimes it dissolves a little bit. It's just frothed. When creating new colors for the first time, I usually like to use little pieces of paper towel to show more what the color will look like. When it comes to dyeing yarn, hot water plus the citric acid is what helps the dye to adhere to the yarn. Um, without the citric acid though, the dye will still ad adhere to the yarn a little bit, and so I like to make sure that the water starting for tonals is a little cooler than for other things so that the yarn has time to like sit and soak and hopefully get an even coverage of the dye that's in the pot. So I'm just adding cooler water to the pot and the premixed dye so that it is fully dispersed. I'm not going to turn my burner on yet, but I'm going to stir it a little bit more before getting the yarn out of the soaking water. Now that our yarn's been soaking, we're going to pick up all the skeins and slowly squeeze out the water. You don't want to wring them too much, but you do want to get rid of a good amount of the excess water.
Before adding them to the dye pot, I usually like to open up the skeins a little bit and slide them along the zip ties to make sure they're open. After soaking, they kind of stick together a little bit and we don't really want that to happen too much. It is finally time to dye these skeins. <laughs> I know it can be a bit awkward because the pot is high, but I like to try to hold the skeins open a little bit as I add them to the dye pot, using one or two in each hand and just moving them around the water as much as possible. Still before turning the burners on, I like to then go in again and open the skeins and slide them along the zip ties once more just to try to get as much dye throughout the skein as possible. I think that um, this is also where I say you should wear gloves while dyeing. Don't do as I do. Do as I say. <laughs> once I feel like it's stirred enough, I will put the lid back on and turn the burner to medium. After about 15 minutes or so, I will go back and stir it up some more and slide the yarn along the zip tie again, just to continually opening up the skeins, trying to get as even coverage as I can. At this point you can see that the yarn is clearly covered, but there's still a ton of dye in the dye pot. Once it gets a bit hotter, it's time to add the citric acid. I usually take a measuring cup and scoop a bunch of the dye water out because it's already hot, and I just add two tablespoons of acid to it. I'm not sure the exact pH that you want to go for this. It does have to be acidic, and it might change how much acid or vinegar you add depending on the water in your area. As awkward as it might be because it is a bit high, I do like to take the yarn completely out of the water before adding the acid and mixing it around. If you have any yarn that is sitting in the water at this time, it may absorb the dye that's still in there and become a little darker and patchy, so I like to make sure everything kind of gets mixed in at the same time. And again, sliding the yarn along the zip ties just to open them up now that the acid is in there. And just like that, I will let it sit for another 10 to 15 minutes before checking on it again. I know it may seem repetitive, but I do like to move the yarn around about every 10 minutes or so until the dye is completely absorbed to try to get it as evenly covered as possible. I think the magic of hand dyed yarns is that they are never fully solids. Tonals really do have slight variations that make them really nice when they work up. And here you can see that most of the dye is already gone from that water. One thing that I like to do often that I'm not showing today is add a second or even third color to the dye pot in the same way that we added the citric acid. I find that additional colors sometimes give it even more depth and they're just really nice to work up. <laughs> After you turn the burners off and your yarn has fully cooled down on its own, it is time to soak it. I like to make a nice warm bath with wool wash. I like the soak brand, but any of your favorites will be fine. And just like in the beginning, the yarn goes in and it sits and soaks until you hang it up to dry. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this helped. I hope it encouraged you to start your dyeing journey. I know it is, it definitely was very intimidating for me to start uh, back when I did, but just jumping in, learning things, making mistakes definitely helped grow and enjoy the process. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you do make your own uh, Baja Blast-ish colorway, let me know. Tag me on Instagram, The Little Fox's Knits. Um, if you have any other questions or comments, please leave them below. 
I love you very much, and I hope you have a great day. Bye, friends!